everybody. Welcome. I, I'm gonna take my thing. Oh, I'm gonna readjust a little bit. There we go. Okay, so how is everybody today? Welcome to another fun-filled Friday streaming. Let me check and make sure. Okay, I'm getting a good feed on my other computer. Uh, I see my microphone's jumping. I'm doing good, Motion Bug. How are you doing? Thanks for coming along. Uh, everyone can hear me fine. Good. Bye, Joe. Good. Okay, excellent. Hello, uh, Rob. Oh, wow, that's a. Hold on. Roboto Ikando. Nice. Hey. Doing good. Thank you for asking. How are you doing? Hope all is well for everybody tuning in and let's have some more fun. Um, doing well, Morf Morpheus. Thank you. <clears throat> all good. Yes. Beautiful. Okay. So we're continuing on our journey here of making this uh, Banshee vampire that again, we're looking at the purpose of we're going to be making this into a miniature. So I, I started working on some crown ideas this week. So we're going to touch on that today and then we're going to go into it. I'm going to start doing some more with the armor as well. I'm just going to start going at it. And as always, though, I'm here to answer your questions and work with you guys and go through the process here with you. So uh, I've got a couple. You guys can actually probably help me out a little bit with the crown choices because I'm still undecided. I was playing a lot more than I should have, in all honesty. I just wasn't feeling some of the designs that I was kicking out. So you guys can help me along with this, I think, today. You guys can be one of, you, you'll be my partners. The partners in artistic craft. Okay? Yeah, and here's hoping, Wintry Snowman. Uh, hopefully. Right now it's showing I'm getting very good internet connection. So it might have been a fluky thing last week. Uh, <clears throat> you, I sound a little bit lower. Uh, okay, let me... My microphone's like like sitting on top of my Cintiq, so it shouldn't be lower. Okay. So does that sound better? Okay, so again, the crown ideas, I wanted to have some fun, and I'll be honest with you. There were some designs that I wasn't feeling, so um, I didn't get as many crown ideas that I wanted to get done. But hey, we're going to do this, okay? So this is this is, these are just a couple that I put together, and we'll go through... Because I use different techniques for actually each one of these. So it, I think, obviously, you guys are here to also learn and take some things, information back. So I like to show the techniques that I'm using here. So this is the one. Uh, and then I went into something more like this. That's using a little bit of different technique, a smaller crown, more like kind of thorny type of feel to it. Then I took that idea and went with even... Uh, higher end thorny crown but again this is also even still using a different technique to get to this right so I want to go through these and I saw someone already said it Morph is already saying a ray mesh 100% a ray mesh this, this is all ray mesh this crown okay so you know and I think it's important when you're making these to step back and see kind of how it's working with the character right and see the direction it's going so this is, I kind of went in in these ones, but since the armor is going to be so sharp and rough, I think I might go more in this realm where it's got a little bit of sharpness. Oh, crawl. You're bringing it. You're bringing crawl? No way. I love it. For those that don't know, that's an 80s film. I want to say like 82. Look it up, John. I want to say 82. Maybe. No, maybe. No, not 82. Um... I'm going to say 83 because I saw that movie in the drive-in as a young, young child. So let's see. Maybe I was, maybe that sounds about right. 83, maybe 84. I'm going to say 83 when that movie came out. Uh, so there you go. Um, here, well, I, you're still saying my sound is, well, here. Well, normally it's the opposite for me. You, my sound's too high. There, that should definitely, I've got it cranked up now. Yeah, you were like six when that came out. Am I right? Look it up. Am I right? Was it 83? I want to say 83. Here's the game. What year did it come out? Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Maybe a tad bit lower, you guys. Yeah, I get loud, so I normally keep it down a little bit. I'd say there. I wouldn't crank it up any more than that. It's 83. Nice. I was right. All right. Beautiful. All right. So let's get going on this. 
Okay, so let's 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 make a couple of crowns together, and then you guys can help me pick. I got that one looks the good one. We'll try a couple different techniques um, here so that we can look at where we want to go with this. Okay, yes, bring in the '80s, John. Thank you. I appreciate it. Mm. So let's. Uh, I'm gonna start with just something like a cube. Uh, me, I don't want to start with a cube like this. I don't use this cube really ever at all. Nice. Sandy brought the IMDB for those that want to know. Thanks, Sandy. Uh, hey, Jack. Thanks for coming in. So this pole here that's at the top of this cube, I don't personally use it. I don't. It causes problems if you're going to sculpt across it, if I'm trying to use Z-Modeler on it. It's just no bueno. Like, if you're going to go Dynamesh, it's not going to matter. But if you're going to use this for kind of where I'm going, I want to go low polygon. I'm going to use it with a ray mesh. So I'm just going to swap this cube out with this cube. So I'm just going to use my gizmo ability to swap out the pieces. And I want to start with this as kind of like a blank canvas, blank way of starting. What do I want to do? So I'm going to do something. Let's now let's put something together now. Let's start using Z Modeler along with. So let's go back to default here and just start making maybe some shape that maybe this would be having. We're going to go like that. Um, I definitely want to pull down on this, so I'm going to just make my life quick. I'm going to do a little mirror and weld and do something like this. Okay, so here's what's going to happen, though. If you notice, when I pull on that, you see what's happening to the geometry. This is kind of stuff you probably would want to stay away from. So it would be better if I switch to Z Modeler and then I just Q-Mesh down a polygon here, right? this would make more sense. So I'm gonna actually delete this. So let me go back to insert and just pull on a face like this, right? So you see what happens here is it's going along the normal, right? So because this, this face I'm pulling on is facing down, it's not following that angle I've now put in my model. Crawl. The fact that you remember Crawl puts us both in a certain age group. It, 100% does, Sandy. 100%. Hey, Sandy, I'll be honest with you. As, as an instructor, I have students that are probably should know certain movies that don't, honestly, too. It's always fun to find out what people know about movies. Kroll brings back so many memories for me. Okay, so why I'm bringing this up, people, the better way approach probably for this, instead of doing a Q-mesh like this, right, where this is creating flat, I, I want to stick with this angle that I have. Okay, so I'm going to use the gizmo instead. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the Alt key. And you can see now I've made that green arrow follow the line of this polygon. This is huge. I use this all the time, like all the time. Okay, so again, I'm holding the Alt key and it's going to snap to a point. But you see it keeps moving. If I keep moving my hand, it keeps moving. So if I now come down, point at that bottom vertex point down here, you can see that green arrow follows perfectly along that line. So this allows me to do is mask everything else but the bottom, and then I can use the extruder to get that line now. So now I'm carrying through that same line. Okay, so if you're dealing with something like this where I'm low, low polygon, this is going to be very useful for you, okay? And it was 100% a fantastic but bad movie. Good times though, right? And then now, right, if I make this and do this, it's the same thing now. Now I'm gonna pull like that, right? And now what that's doing for me is keeping this shape all in line. I'm not getting that skewed thing that I was getting before, okay? So just a little tip for you, right? Especially if you're gonna go down this realm of using something low, low polygonal, okay? Um, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at this. I'm gonna play with this a little bit more too. Maybe I also, let's put this in the center. And I'm just playing with a shape a little bit here. And now I'm, uh, this is one of my favorite slide with Z modeler, slide this up and just give it a little more volume. So it's, it's got a little bit more wideness in there. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say, okay, that looks good. My next step is what does this look like flat or I mean smooth. Okay. You missed the tip. What was you missed the tip? Which one? Are you talking about what I did with the gizmo? I, I see 
It's hard to read your name because I got a blue background and your name's blue. And Vanderly, you missed the tip. Okay. Oh, look, we've already got one coming. John's trying to pull one of these on us, people. John's trying to pull one of these. Oh, the extrude move? Okay, here. Let me go back and John will come back to you. Okay, so here, I'll go slow. As slow as I can. Okay. Okay, so, oh, modeling the uh, the crawl. What we're going to do, Sandy, that's how I would do it, honestly. We could probably do it. It'd be fun to play with that a little bit. That'd be actually cool to look for a crown. I like, yes, I like where you're going. All right, so, again, the gizmo, John, I'll come back to your tangent. The gizmo is allowing us, if you hold the alt key, in essence, unlocks the gizmo. You see the icon, the lock is unlocked. Arr, a lock. And if you let go, see, and then it'll be locked again. So I'm holding the Alt key. That snaps it to any point of the mesh that I want to. Just holding the Alt key, it moves the gizmo, finds the normal that I'm clicking on, the face that I'm clicking on, and line, aligns the gizmo that direction. Okay, so you can see the red arrow is facing the direction of the face. So what I'm doing is I know it does this, and I know it's constantly searching for points to connect to. So I hold the Alt. Click on this point, and I keep dragging, 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 bam. And then because now I pointed at that point, the arrow now follows that line. And now the next thing that I'm doing, I know the gizmo can extrude, okay? So then I'm masking off everything but the bottom face. So this, because I'm low polygon, I'm doing this. So I'm holding the alt key right now. So I'm just, like, this is no key. Look, see? Look up here! Look at me! Look at me! Look at me! Right? Right? No key. No keyboard. No keyboard. Right? But I still got mask on. Okay? Hold the alt key. It turns to a white box. What that does is masks everything else but what's in the white box. And because this is only one face, then that only one face is unmasked. And then now I'm holding the control key down. And this little arrow right here, I'm just clicking on it and then extrudes for me. That's it. That, that's all I'm doing. Nothing too more fancier than this. And then, then I switched the slide and I slid that up. And then we did a mirror and weld, right? And then now this, because the gizmo is sitting in the same spot, I can pull now the middle portion out. And the key part here is these faces here, they're staying all flat, right? Previously, remember, I was starting to get a weirdness happening. I don't even know how to do like I was getting like that, a V starting to happen, right? I might want to do that, but not right now. I don't want to do that right now, okay? So there you go. That's how that's how I did that. And then we did this. And then I centered it and gave it a little bit of some volume to it. Okay. So, uh, John, what are you tangenting us with right now? Okay. John's got a, a tangent question. Hopefully, it's not an inception tangent. Okay. Hopefully, it's not one of these. All right. So let's see. Is there a button IMM with four circles for stitches? So for ZBrush, I was trying to figure out how to create that with just Z modeling, no Boolean, low polygon. Right, so you want an IMM with four circles for stitches. Okay, so you're trying to make stitches. Uh, I, I, I'm assuming, hold on, I'm assuming, here, I'm gonna grab something real quick. Uh, not there, let's go here in our brush. I'm assuming, John, you were looking for, say, a stitch like this, right? So this is a stitch, right? And then you want, obviously, a circle there and a circle there because you want to kind of make the hole so it looks like, obviously, what it would be doing, right? There would be some tension on the cloth pulling that hole because then the stitch went in there, right? So there'd be a little bit of tension on the cloth. That's what you're looking for? Right? That's what you're looking for? Right, so this is just a stitch brush, right? That is going along a curve, right? And then this particular one is going like this. So here, if we rip it off, so I'm gonna go to brush, I'm gonna say to mesh, there's our stitch, right? I can now make the stitches go this direction if I want to, and then brush from mesh, and now I've got two versions of this same stitch, right? I got it doing that, or I got it doing, doing the other one, this right so you see this one or this one okay and then this one this one i would probably make a little bit more gap happening in there right so in the stroke palette 
I would turn up this lazy radius. And I probably, uh, let's try 1.5 first. Not lazy, not lazy radius. Sorry, it's not what I want. I want the curve. I don't know why I'm jumping. If I want this 1.5, I want curve stepping, and then that way there's a gap. So that's going to control now for this one how big of it. So it looks like I want to go bigger, probably two, maybe even three. Yeah, there's too many repeating now. Let's go crazy. Let's get crazy. Let's go four. Yeah, there we go. That's better. So that's what I would want. Something like this, right? So this is a stitch, okay? And then it's going along there. Uh, okay, uh, let me find it and get back to you. It's a button IMM. Oh, okay. So you, what's the brush called, John? So we all can be looking at the same brush that you're looking at because there's a couple buttons. Um, I know in IMM parts, this one, you're talking about this one right here. Okay, that, that's the one I'm at. So you want the first one, and then you want to do what with this? So put what you want while I'm looking at. Okay, and what do you want to do with this? What is it? What is it? What's four? You want four of them? Is that what you want? So when you draw out an insert mesh brush, you just want four of those at once. So you don't have to do this, 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 and this. Is that what you're looking for? Oh, how did I create the four holes? Oh, ah, ah, ah. So John's asking is if we look at just this, how did I create the four holes there, right? Because when this smooths, it's going to give me those four holes, okay? And yeah, this is not Boolean. I didn't, I didn't use Boolean to do that. In fact, I made this for the application. So I didn't use Boolean. It's all about the topology. Okay, it's all about getting smart about this. So I had to find the right number. So if you look, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve edges. So I grabbed this is what I grabbed. So and I went down to initialize. So say a line along the Z. I turned this down so there's no spans there. And I dropped this to 12. Right? So now that I have 12 polygons going across. Okay, and then I also shrunk it because I didn't need it that big. Okay, and then now I made this a mesh and now I start going at this. Okay, so I start using my Z modeler. Okay, so I just started doing, I remember I just did an insert here. Okay, then I grabbed these faces. Let's start making new poly groups. It's just gonna make our lives a lot easier. So I'm gonna Q mesh polygroup all now. So I'm gonna go just down a little bit and then down. And over here, let's insert, let's throw some intensity on this. So it kind of rounds that out. So now I have that. So what we're looking at now is this, right? So that's creating now that ridged in the button, right? That's all I was doing that for, okay? Um, if I want that ridge to be a little stronger, then obviously we would crease right there and then see that ridge now gets stronger in essence or sharper is really probably the correct terminology that we want to be using. But today's Friday and we're a little going having some fun. Okay. So now that I have that, okay, I, as you guys, if you guys have watched my streams, I like creasing stuff and I like playing with the crease level to kind of make it look a little different. It depends on what kind of button we're going for, right? So I'm just going to keep it at two. I got my dynamic subdivision levels at four. Okay. And now I just want to start making it into the four buttons. So this topology is not going to cut it for you. Right. So I needed to make new topology here. So that's what did I, that's what I ended up doing. Right. So if we go back and look at this button here, let's just separate this for now. Actually, let's, Let's do this. Let's insert this in here. Okay. So we got them in the same spots. Okay. So this is the new mesh. Okay. And then you can see the old mesh. Okay. Back there. So I need to recreate this topology that we have going on here. So you can see I've got a couple edge loops going on here. And I did this. This is important. If you're going to stick with low polygon, it's important for this. Okay. To get to this so <clears throat> these edge loops are important because i know what's happening here with the topology 
okay, is going to be something that's going to maybe cause a problem down the line for me. All right, so I'm going to delete. Let's get rid of the 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 um, the ropes. Beep. So all we're doing is looking at this. Okay, so these points are going to pull a certain way. So I want to make some supporting topology in here first. So this is why I inserted an edge loop and another, and another edge loop here. Okay. Because when I do this, I want good topology here leading up to this round part. Because I'm going to start messing with this topology in the middle, right? In essence, that's what I'm looking to do. So now I look at just this and I'm going to get rid of the middle topology. And here, I'm going to turn on display double so you can see what I got here, right? So then this is what I have. And you know what? Let's move. Let's just so we can see both at the same time. Forget transparency. Let's just move this over so that we're looking at this in the same, in the same light. Okay. So the other thing I did also was I rotated this to give me that, right? So... I wanted that ability in here. So I need to, see there's, again, I counted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, right? One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Bull, wonderful mathematics in a stream. Yay. Okay, that's important because then it's going to allow me to rebuild the internal topology that I need to make this happen. Let's, I'm even going to merge down so we can look at everything together. In all in same glory okay so this is now just about topology driving it okay it this would be easy to do with black booleans though obviously that'd be a way to go and then just z remesh it would be the easiest way to go about doing all this okay so i need some now topology to support and what i'm doing for the person that just asked i got asked a question how the four buttons were made, this button, how the four holes were made. So I'm kind of showing the workflow of that, of how we can get to that point, right? So <clears throat> this gives me this span. So it gives me these, these faces, okay? So those are those. So here, let me, we'll color coordinate them, the green on the green, okay? Now I need to come across, so I need edge loops. So I'm going to insert multiple edge loops and give me just two spans across like this. Okay. And then now I need to bridge these now. Okay. So I'm going to bridge from there to there and then there to there. And then now these purple faces are in essence now those purple faces. Okay. So if you want now, you can take these, right? And you want like I did or like we did here right kind of just you can manipulate those if you want to keep it clean 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 topology like that then you can do that if you want to right so you're gonna need since we're doing a back right the backs got to be the same right so this isn't gonna work for us anymore right so really this whatever I'm doing here should be the same in the back so we should get rid of this because this isn't going to work for us. We need something like that, right? And then now let's delete that. <clears throat> let's delete hidden, okay? And then now these are quads. So that's a quad, 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 quad. And then now you're inserting, well, we're going to bridge again. Bridge, 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 right? And those red ones are the holes. Those are going to become the holes. And if you look, I did one, we did one more inset as well. Okay. And you started working at things like this to get where you wanted this to go. So you can see there's more topology here, right? And more here to get more roundness. Okay. So before you put those in, you need another edge loop right here. So I would do an insert. We'll do this and let's let's start turning symmetry on to make our lives easier. So we got that there. We need that there and we need that there, right? Because we need more more topology to support the shape that I'm trying to get, right? If you want to have now this 
can start coming in in the middle a little bit, right? And then now these can start tailing in, right? So this is just a way to go about doing this, right? And then now you've got something like this. And now you're going to get, when you bridge, instead of one polygon, you're going to get two polygons there. Okay, so you can see that's kind of what I started doing the topology, and I just, I just reshaped the topology a little bit. That's all. Hold on. Hold the phone. I'm gonna wait. There we go. Okay, so now you take these faces and me. I did one more inset, polygroup all, and then I just did this. So I got another inset. Right. And you see that triangle going across? That's really not going to matter because I'm going to end up deleting these faces anyways, right? Um, but if you want to control that, that's what this snapping does in here, this snapping slider. Let me make sure you guys can see it. There you go. Let me, let me, because the graphics in the way. There you go. This right here, this might help get rid of the triangle. There, so you got rid of the triangle, right? And then now you're just going to take these faces and now you're just going to push them in okay so then you would q mesh this polygroup all and push it in say something like that. i'm going to go real far right like this and now there you go there's you start looking at this and then you start getting that okay that would be a way you could do this for sure right it'd be a, a simple way to go about doing this Okay. And then if you're going to do split points, you got to have supporting topology to do split points, right? So you're going to, if you're going to go the, the, the route of split points for the person who just brought that up, that also could be a way to go about it. <clears throat> mm -mm -mm, hold on. Let me delete hidden I'm gonna um, I'm gonna show you guys maybe another way that we can try as an experiment oh I I made the faces there we go so my faces there okay so split points when you're doing it let's go back back to okay you have to be mindful of that split Right, so if I'm inserting here, we'll insert this right through here. Let's actually just, it'd be better if we did an inset. We'll do an inset instead. Okay, if I come to these points and do a split, right? You gotta remember it's going to, going to create like geometry like that, right? So then you need supported topology for that. Okay, so another, honestly, another way to go about this, you could just straight up use a cube. Okay, so if you want to even go another route right about this, so this is one way. Okay, let's now append a cube. All right, let's look at just the cube now. And again, you guys know I don't like this. So I'm going to go with giving me, because someone brought up split points, and I think that's a great example. So let's see, I'm going to need probably, I want to say probably four. Let's try four by four by four. Let's see what that one looks like. Okay. Yeah, that would, that would probably work. It's going to create a little bit wonky topology in the middle. Okay. But here's something just food for thought for you all. Okay. So for the split point one, I like your idea where you're going with that. So obviously we can be symmetrical with this. So let's look at it this way. And they're talking about this. And then that, right? And then now you do the same thing on the front and the back. And then now you just Q mesh, polygroup all, push them in, and then there's your four holes. The problem is it's squared. Okay? So there's there's ways to get around this, though. Okay? There's a lot of ways to get around the squared thing. Would be one way now is let's protect the inner polygroups, right? And then you guys could just switch to like clip circle, right? And then do this, right? And then allow it to see clip out, 
right? And see, that's going to move. So really, the only points you really care about, in all honesty, is the pink ones. That's all you care about. You just care about those. You don't want those to lose the circle ability. So you can mask those out, use the clip, right? Get it out this, and then I'm holding the Alt key, and then it'll start pulling on things like this, right? So I would probably also mask those so I don't get, oops, I don't get that. So you could go about this way, right? And then there you go, you got a button now with those four holes, okay? That could be a way you could go to it as well. Now, you also have in in ZModeler, right? You have a sphere, a spherized. Okay, so you could let's make let's make all these outer points. Okay, there we want make them one polygroup, and then now you can come here, spherize, say polygroup all right and keep running this and it's just going to see it's just going to start spherizing it so this is another way if you want to stick low 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 topology so you see my topology right this see all this is getting ugly over here so this is why i'm making those insets right so it would be more beneficial now to get these faces and make another so in essence do a q mesh and what i'm talking about is this right that way, when you go to smooth this, and I would even throw another edge loop in here, when you go to smooth this, that ugly topology, see it's happening in the inside, and the user's never going to see that. You're never gonna, you're never gonna have that. Okay, and then guys, you, this is we got for days. We can go with this, right? And then now I can clip and say, oh, I want those to be a little bit more flat in, like that, and right, and then there you go, right? Whoops, and then now let's make the green have be creased on the outside and then there you go there's your button with four holes right so no, another way of going about it how's it going alex right and then just for a fourth way are we on four i don't even know what number we're on right now use the new stuff man use the new stuff don't be shy don't be bashful with the new stuff okay don't be shy with it okay so what we can do Right, since you don't, you were talking about not using live booleans. Obviously, you could just use live booleans and then remesh it, and you're done. That's probably what most people would do. Okay, so you could also now use this stuff, right? I could use the mesh extrude, and then I would throw on a circle. Okay, and then now I would just go right here, and this is going to give me a circle. Right, there's my circle, and if I don't move, if I don't move the canvas or anything like that. I can go about redrawing this another circle like over here, right? And then hold the alt key and now that's cutting into the surface, right? So if I want it now to go all the way through, let's delete this, okay? And not have live booleans on, okay? You need to have enough thickness in your topology. So let's undo this. So again, first step, let's make a circle. Let's do it again. Move it over here. Hold the Alt key, right? And have it start going through the surface is what we want to have happening, right? So now you've got stuff like this going on, right? <clears throat> so I would make sure that when I'm doing this, the Z intensity is gonna be important, okay? Cause that's controlling in essence, how thick our pieces are getting, right? So if we go with a higher, Z intensity, right? It's going to be thicker through. Okay. So you got to draw on something. So I'm just drawing on the existing button. So let's go back down to like something like 26, make that. Then we'll go higher now. Let's just go all the way. Okay. And then there, there, and then move up here. Alt key. And then pushing that into the surface, right? To start getting stuff that I want to have happening through there. Okay, so this is something else that you guys can do as well is use just use this to start cutting into things and as long again as long as you're not I might need to do a reset as long as you're not moving right you can do stuff with that right you can't move the camera right that's the key part is no movement of the camera okay so when you're doing stuff like this you can't move the camera 
to start cutting into this, right? Like that. Okay, so as long as you don't move the camera, then you can start using it to cut into, right? So then there's that. And now this is just mirror and welding over, right? To get what you want, right? So I'd mirror and weld over the X, and then now you need mirror and weld over. It might help if I was actually looking at this, correct? This would be better if we looked at it this way. Right, and then now you'd mirror and weld over the Y as well. So this, you'd have to make sure you're sitting at the center of the world if you're gonna use mirror and weld. But you don't have to, right? We could have, let's let's see, uh, let's try it. I, I, I haven't tried this. I, you know what, I, nah, I didn't try this. Let's do this. Let's just do the first one. And then let's turn on symmetry X and Y. I, I haven't tried this. This would be the first time I'm trying that. Yeah, it's, it's not, it's getting confused on where to cut. Yeah, it doesn't work. All right, so that's just another way though. Lock camera button, sure. If you have perspective on, I don't have perspective on though. So that lock camera, this is only gonna work with perspective turned on. I don't have perspective turned on. But yeah, that would work. Okay, boom. All right, so there you go. Yeah, we led into, we led into this. We led into this. Uh, okay, sound wave. Yeah, I'll have to get back to sound wave in probably a little bit. I haven't had time. You can already use it with made models. That's that's possible. You can already use this cutability with made models. You'd have to use live booleans though with it, but it's you can. It's it's possible. So like if we come back to like say this crown, right on her, this is already made, right? If I turn on live booleans, okay, this is my selected mesh right now. This crown is the selected subtool, okay, and because live booleans is on, you have the ability. I could draw this out and if I hold the alt key, see it's cutting in through the crown because now it's a, a, a second subtool that's automatically turned this attractive. So technically you can do what you're asking right now, uh, Nizumi. That's all, that's all you would have to do. So it's 100% possible to do that. No, you're not, every question's, listen, there's no bad question, okay? Uh, mate, I couldn't say if there'll be a discount at any time. I can't, I couldn't tell you that. We don't really discount ZBrush that much because it's, it's free upgrades for pretty much life. They all are about the tangents and the Lisa needs braces moments, right? So there you go. Okay. Back to the, back to the crown. Okay. There we go. We got back to the crown. Okay. So I got a piece here that I'm liking. Okay. And then now, just like somebody had already brought up in the stream, for me, Array Mesh is going to be my friend, okay? So I want this to be repeated, I'm going to say six times for this crown. So I'm going to say six times, okay? Nothing's happening from buttons to crowns, right? So nothing is happening here to this because the arrays are all sitting in the same yeah, yeah, John, I do remember. Yes, John actually invented the Inception uh, tangent. Right? That was him. Tanto plan! Right? So, right now, I've got six pieces all sitting in the same spot. Okay? And what I want to do is I want to rotate them in a way. I want to rotate them around the pivot point of a ray mesh in this fashion. So, that would be a Y. Okay? So now that I have this, okay, I can just say rotate and I'm going to say 360 degrees. And then now these are rotating 360 degrees as you can see. And you get happy with mistakes with this, okay? Sina, to your question, when you say subtool layers, are you just meaning the individual subtools? 
because we don't call subtools layers in ZBrush. I know in CAD programs, they'll call it layers. It's not called layers. We call them meshes and they're subtools because layers is a whole nother thing. That's a whole nother ball game. That's this. That's a whole nother thing. So are you asking about exporting each one of these layers or are you asking exporting actually each subtool? So that would be once you once I see it, I'll answer it for you. Okay, so now that we have this, people, the big thing that I've also turned on here, okay, is these two buttons right here. These positions right here, lock positions and lock sizes. These are important to me, okay? If I turn these off and now let's say I start moving this, you see the array kind of moves as a unit. Move with me, move like a unit. Really better, Morpheus, thank you. You're putting a smile on my face. Better than South Park, I love it. Uh, right? So there you go, right? So, oh, I popped in, thank you. I didn't type 360 degrees. So what I want to do is lock the position. So in essence, this is in essence locking the position from the pivot point. So when I move, they move apart, right? And you can see I start to get some kind of element here. And then the beauty is this is an instinct system. So maybe I want to go this route now and maybe something more like that, right? Because maybe I want to change the look of that. So this is where I like a ray mesh. I now have, okay, I'm starting to see a crown starting to happen here. And I'm not liking even where, where I'm at, okay? So Sina, there's no, you would have to turn on, okay, let me, let me go on this quick tangent, everybody real quick here okay so he's asking how to export each layer on the subtool you the only way to do that with what's inside of zbrush is you got to turn each layer on and then export and then turn the layer off however there is a plugin on zbrush central that will allow you to export the layers so um, i'd have to find it though it's going to take me time to search for it i'd have to find it just email me and then i'll send it to you i'll have to try and go and find it. it's called layer I even remember what the name of it is. Uh, I think it's called Layer Plugin, if I remember right. Um, so for the for you that are in, that's in Brazil, I hear you. It's expensive for sure, right? So there is subscriptions, of course, out there. Um, or you could get into Core at least, and then you're in it, right? You're in the ZBrush atmosphere. And when you got some money, you know you can graduate up to the version I'm playing in right now. That that would be my options for you. I'm, because you got, and I'm not sure if you were aware, we have subscription services. Okay, so, all right, now let's start, let's start playing with this horn a little bit. Let's let's add a little elements to this. So, let's inset this. Let's go ahead and say flat island. Let's add a little more elements to that. Let's turn on dynamics. Okay, I definitely want a crease a little bit more like that. Okay, I want more hard, hard look, uh, 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 like an essence harder surface, maybe something a little bit like that. Okay, and then the beauty again of this all, right, is at any point in time, I'm gonna switch back to my masking pen. I want to even keep changing the shape of this. We can keep changing the shape of this, and then I can see what it's doing everywhere else, right? So this is what I love here. I'm gonna turn off the masking, so you guys can just see. This is what I really like about Array Mesh. I can mess with my design and kind of see where that design is even going. Okay, I like that shape that I'm getting right there. All right, so I made an inset here on purpose. Okay, so I wanted, you know, looking at this, I should grab also these points as well. So that when I'm pulling, I want that inset to also have the same thing inside okay because i want that that's what i'm looking for is that so i want those faces now now we can q mesh them right now here's something i'm going to make mine look a little bit more kind of like thorns i guess coming off this a little bit more okay um so of course you know all day now we can mess around with this and see what that's going to look like to a point and now you got to see something like that right that Okay, that looks cool. I like that. That's starting to give a little bit of cool. That would look cool for what I'm doing with her, with the Banshee, right? With this armor. It's sharp. It's rough, right? That really starts to bring it to live a little bit, a little bit more life in there. 
Okay, so this would be one example for us. Okay, so I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna say, okay, let's duplicate a couple of these. And then that way we've already always got one that's just back to the basics of this, right? And let's do what we just did now to this one because I'm going to need to make a decision here on what I want to go with, okay, for this. So we definitely want to scale it down, okay? And then I wanted this to kind of move up a little bit like that, okay? So now you got some thorn shape like that. And then now I can continue to play with this. I can say, how about... Let's crease this one here. And so now we'll get that. And let's see, what if I come into these edges and crease just these edges right here? Right, give it kind of that look. Right, in fact, I kinda, kinda like that. I think I'm gonna crease every, oops, every other here. So let's see, I creased, oh no, I creased those. So let me crease then these and then give more of our sharper look. What does it look like if I crease this edge too? Okay, yeah, that's, see, that's very different. And I can see what that's looking like throughout the whole thing, right? So that's cool. Let's go to another one. And here's something now else that we can do. So instead of Q meshing this the way that I'm Q meshing like this, I'm going to rip this off and I'm going to change the poly group. Okay. And so now this is floating out here in space. So it's got no, it's got no thickness to it. Right. So I'm going to size it down more like that. Okay. And how I ripped it off for those that don't know, you know, I should probably tell you guys this when you guys are doing this Q mesh, if you hold the control key, will rip off the existing faces. And now I'm still holding the control key. And I just, every time I tap the alt key, I get a new poly group. Okay. So I'm going to come to your question here, uh, Specky Nation, just in a second. And so I'm going to size this down. Okay, that looks good. Now let's give this a little bit of volume. And let's size it down even more. And then now let's, let's have some fun with this. Maybe let's Let's rotate it 30 degrees. Let's move it up here now, something like that, right? So I got this piece and this piece just chilling here, right? And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these faces. Let's go ahead and delete, 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 flat island. And we're going to delete now polygroup all. Oops. So we have this. I'm going to turn display double on so you guys can see exactly what's happening here. Right? So now I've got this and I've got this. Okay? The reason why I'm showing this to you guys is because now we can bridge two holes and then we can do different things. We can try different things out. Okay? So now I'm going to say, let's do arc. So I'm going to click there. Click there and then do like an arc and then see you can do something a little bit different design wise. Let's have it pop out like that. And so now you got that instead. Okay. And then now smooth that out. And now we've got horns like this. So they're kind of rounded and I'm going to play with this. So let's look at just this face and I'm going to take just that point and let's go ahead and let's move that point and make these be to a sharp point, something like that. Okay, and then I'm going to get rid of some edge looping here. Right, so we could probably, you know, let's slide. Let's slide these a little bit more. Let's make sure I have, yep, complete edge loop. And slide this a little bit, slide that. And then now maybe, I don't think I need as many. I'm gonna start deleting some edge loops. I definitely don't need this many edge loops to define what I'm trying to make here. Yeah, there you go, yes, yes! Right, and then there's a different horn, completely, right? So this is kind of what I like about array mesh. 
it's I'm playing around. I'm seeing what I like. Yeah, that one looks pretty. That one looks pretty cool. That might be a good one on her, right? And then now, yeah, I can use this for anything, right? So I saw. Hold on, I saw a couple of questions. Need to upgrade it from uh, Okay, hold on. I'm catching up with the questions. Uh, okay, answered that question. Da, 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 da. Okay, yes. In the section under sub tools where you can insert or pen, is there a way to add or remove your own? I know they're IMMs, but I want shapes that start at zero coordinate. Yeah, anything specy nation. So to your question here, insert and appending. You yeah, you can you can put whatever you want. It doesn't matter what it is. Right, so you just have to, if you got another shape, something you want to use, you got to bring it into ZBrush first. Because if it doesn't know about it, it's got no idea it exists. Right, so you're going to have to import it. If you're bringing something in for another application, import it. And then when you click on this insert a pen, it's the tool palette opens up. And then I can grab anything here. Right, so as long as it's import, it's like there, see, there was another crown idea that I was starting to play with. Okay, and then see, that's inserted right below what I'm doing right now. Okay. So if that, let me know if that answers your question, Specky Nation. But the first thing you're going to need to do is you need to import something first, okay? Uh, all right, the next question. Uh, okay, can someone guide me on what to make cylinder circles? Um, yes. So, uh, Uzaris, if you want round cylinders in the circle, this is all, you're, you, I'm just use a Raymesh would be one way to do it, okay? That's gonna make cylinders wrapping it in a circle. You just select a cylinder and turn on a ray mesh. Everything I'm doing right now would do it. Um, if you're trying to go deeper down the rabbit hole, I would need to get more information from you. Uh, and then yes, Morbius is asking a question. Can I now use the same horn with Nano? 100%, right? Because really the only thing that exists right now is this, right? So yeah, you can pick this up right and make this an insert mesh brush and then now make it a nano and then now you can put these horns wherever you want okay where this sits in space though is going to be important right now this is sitting off space so you see where it where it's drawing out so if i was to do this really i'd want to pick this up first okay so easily thing would be just to unify this this is going to affect my array mesh though okay and then now brush and I want to say brush from mesh. Okay. And then now this, see, see how that's now drawing on this polygon right here. I can make a draw on this polygon if I want to. Or I can take these and say polygroup all, draw them all out. And now they're on, see all those. You got all those spikes going around. And see, they're all kind of different directions right now. So I can play with that in nano mesh as well. So right now I've got all these spikes going around right oh, and i got some bottom ones so let's instead of let's do poly loop instead so we only put them along the bordering edge so now i've got this nano as you can see it's all these spikes going around right we have the ability to control rotation so this is the beauty of nano okay so i can do these kind of rotations i can do any type of rotation that i want to in here now so this is the beauty of nano is i can mess around with this Okay, but you can see they're they're kind of all in different directions. The 80 spikes is right. That's what this alignment's for. Okay, so you have options here, random, point order. So see, look, the point order, they're all now facing the same direction. Then you got near edge, long edge, short edge, and then you got normal. And you see the normals, right? So point order is working for me. So now I just probably, I would probably want to rotate them 180 right different ways okay this is how you would go about working with this right and then you got offsets so this is offset so i can push them in and out so yes once you've made this you can use it this is obviously not a good thing to me because it's very but yes to your question it is possible okay so back to my array Okay, and now let's let's have a little more fun with this mesh. All right, let's do another insert here. Let's do this. Let's do a Q mesh now. 
Let's do a poly loop through here. I want it to sit in a little bit. So we get something a little bit more like that, right? And now these edges here need to be creased so that they can match what I'm making. Right, so this needs to be creased and then, whoops, that needs to be creased. If I'm trying to stick with the design element that I'm trying to go with right now, then I need, you know, what is what does this look like if we crease that? I kind of like, I'm just gonna go crease all. I kinda, I'm kind i kind of digging everything creased. Kind of like that look of with everything being creased on this particular one. Okay, and then now I can say, let's add some more stuff to this. Let's, uh, let's grab this, right? And I'm gonna say, let's grab one of our new brushes, extrude profile two, and let's add a little bit more to this. So I'm gonna say poly groups and then tap on that and let's go a lot bigger and get something like this, right? Now, the thing with this is this is trying to wrap around very, very, very low polygons, okay? So if I was really going to do this, and this all is gonna lead me to more things also with this, with a ray mesh, is the better thing would be for me to do is actually duplicate this array, right? And then now, this right now, I've got dynamic on. I'm gonna apply this so that I get more topology to help with what I'm looking to do. So what I'm looking to do is I really only care about now this part, right? So I'm, I'm on a duplicated version of this, okay? Let me delete the subdivision levels, okay? And then now, because there's more topology here, when I go tell ZBrush in the stroke palette to frame the mesh based upon polygroups, you can see the curves got more density in it. There's more information there. So when I go and click on this, so you're getting a, I'm getting a better result. Of, and this is more what I'm looking for. And then now I decide, okay, how big do I want this to go, right? And then now I'll turn on the other one so I can see what is that going to look start looking like, right? And again, I'm, I'm arraying two of these now. I'm arraying these horn things and I am now arraying, right? this like right i'm getting an array of this going on right now okay so it's just opening up and then now i can find well which which one of these do i actually want to use maybe i want to maybe what does this one look like oh that's that's interesting nah i don't like that one right this is the beauty of being along a curve you find the one that you want and then there you go i found it and then now the only thing i want to keep right on this this in essence what i'm on right now I want just that thing, only that. And so I, what I did is I reused what we were making to give me the ability to make this kind of thing happening. And let me go up and put this back on the smoothing and get rid of the curve. And now you've got something like this going on, right? <clears throat> so this is just me using the advantage of a ray mesh to get where I need to go, right, in essence, okay? Is this making sense? And then that doesn't end there, right? We can even, you know, duplicate this, right? Now this is a different one. And then now let's center this and maybe even size it down and rotate it differently, right? Bring it down. I can make another spike coming off this now. So now I got maybe that, maybe even rotate a little bit more. So now we've got a crown that's doing, you know, more spikes going through it. Really starts to just give that look. Okay, I'm going to, I don't know, let's duplicate this one. Let's switch to this, right? And maybe even rotate them differently. Maybe give a little bit different rotations to some of these in here. Right, so now I've got a little one going on in here. But instead of that, let me go back to my array. Let me put it back at 360. And now let me just add more repeating points. Say something like that. Right, so you can see, we can, this, this is looking pretty cool. This one's looking pretty, I'm liking this. This is not bad, eh? What do you guys think? That one's not bad. 
That'll fit her pretty good, I think. That'd be a fun one to to look at. Let's let's uh let's play with the sizing of this this one a little bit. Uh, so let's switch back to the gizmo and let's maybe size it down so it's tinier. No, 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 no. Maybe, maybe something like this. What if what if we rotated it just for fun? Mm, I don't like it rotated. I'm I'm preferring this, but we'll go a little bit smaller. Wish I was a, maybe moving in space a little bit more. Right and see, I got twelve coming, so I got, I got even more happening now. Right, so I don't even need really. I don't even need that other one. Right, this is going to be enough for me to. Uh, I kind of like the other one. It's just keeping that one bigger. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. Let's give it something in the middle so it actually can be <whistles> plopped on the head. Eh, that's important. All right, so let me. Let's go ahead and let's insert something. Let's insert a cube. Let's drop this to the bottom. So we got a cube. I am going to swap this out with a cylinder. And it needs to be aligned 90 degrees that way. And we're going to size this up. And we are going to open the middle portion. So it gives me something like that. And let's see. Let's something like you know what actually let's switch to the ring let's play with the ring actually instead let's size this up we got something that fits close to the big pieces and I'm gonna do some other stuff with the little pieces let's do something I don't know something like this and let's now play with the inner circle and let's Cut down on the spans and rotate the spans. So I'm getting a little something mm, like this. Maybe use that is going to be a part of what I'm looking. Yeah, okay, I like that. And then let's switch to a deformer. Let's go to extrude and not symmetrical. And let's bring it down so it sits like this on her head a little something more like that we're going to smooth that out and let's size this now let's take this part and i'm going to taper that in just a little bit right start giving me a little bit of a taper in there i want that tapering to happen throughout this right and then now we are getting to where i want this to look like right Yes, there. Happy little trees. There. And let's go back to Z Modeler. And we're going to switch to Q meshing. And maybe let's do where every one of these are. Right? We can play with that. Right? right, right. Maybe what if I Q mesh? Nope, not poly loop. Something coming off the crown as well. Right? Mm, I don't like that. I think this is working for me. Right? So these are just ideas here, right? Of us looking at exploratory area of getting to where I want to go with this. Okay? Okay? So this would be a way of looking at it in a ray mesh way. Okay? What would be your preferred way to put feathers on a mesh? Uh, fiber mesh is a really great way to put feathers for sure. Um, that is a great way. Uh, hold on, I'm just catching up questions. So to your question, someone's asking, what would be, Alex is asking, what would be your preferred way to put feathers on a mesh? I do a combination of many things. Um, but fiber mesh is a really good way to just get the base feathers. That's a really good way to get a base feather, right? So, all right, you guys want to go on that tangent real quick?
Okay, so there, I really like, let's first like, um, let's just quickly make something. Uh, let's make, here, I'm just thinking about what I want to do here. Let, let's go ahead and make something like that. Okay, like this. Perfecto. Let's go ahead and let's dynamesh this. Okay, let's dynamesh this. I do not want any blur. Okay, dense enough. Okay, let's go ahead now and I'm going to use the clips. Maybe just create a little something like this. Good way to make a sword, right? Which we're going to be making for what I have, right? Okay, good start there. Let's go ahead and now let's put on a deformer. Let's make that symmetrical. Definitely want to put some tapering in the bottom. We don't need to save. Okay, put some tapering on the top. So let's widen that out. Okay, and then let's go ahead and just make this be longer. Okay, something like that. Let's add actually, let's accept that. Let's put a deformer on it again. And this time, let me add another point. So that way, when I'm pulling on this, it's pulling a little different. Right, there we go. And let's go ahead and accept that. And let's add a deformer again. And now let's put a little more volume there. A little more volume in there. Yeah, let's get some more points going. Volume in here just change it up a little bit so what you would do is probably make more than one feather okay obviously that'd be the route i would go i'd definitely make more than one okay and then all right that's let's say that's what it's somewhat of a, it's probably too much to a point now like it needs to definitely widen up on the top there that's that's more feather like okay um, now I'm going to say, okay, this mesh, great. Let's go ahead. This is sitting at 19,000 polygons. Okay. What's going on, Chris? How are you doing? Thanks for coming through. Okay. And that was a, a way of making a sword too, right there. There's lots of things we can do with this, right? And now I'm going to say, let's get this lower polygon. So this is where I'm going to use a Z remesher. I'm going to start with at a thousand polygons, symmetrical. And let's just remesh this. Okay, so that's sitting at about 3,000. So I'm going to go all the way now to the bottom and remesh this. Let's get this as low as I can. There we go. Okay, so that's pretty low. Right? So that's that's good. I'm liking that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and let's copy this. And now let's throw in a cylinder. And I need it to have closing. And let's rotate it 90 degrees. And let's go ahead and go a lot smaller. Okay, and now let's stretch it out. Something like that. Okay, and then let's go ahead and let's taper it in. So it starts to taper inward there. Let's even do more tapering. Let's do some more tapering in here too. Yeah, there. Okay, let's go ahead and taper down here. Let's taper, taper, taper. Taper, taper, taper. And you notice I keep recentering my gizmo so that where the scaling's happening, it's happening on the vertex points that I want it to happen on, right? So I'm trying to stay low so I have something like this because I'm going to be able to use this in many different ways, okay? And by having it low polygon right now, it's going to be a little bit beneficial for me because especially if I'm going to start making feathers, you're going to want hundreds of these, if not thousands of these, right? So you got to start doing, thinking about this. I'm only at 576 polygons right now. If I would have stayed at that 20,000 polygons, you're doing 20,000 polygons times now, let's say you want 100 feathers, do that math, right? You're going to get, upper, what is that, 2 million? Am I doing my math? Is it 200,000? 200,000, right? But that's quick, right? That's only 100. 100 feathers is not enough. So I want to keep this relatively low, okay? So something, uh, I mean, it's a little much. Okay, something like this, right? That has 
a feather look to it per se, right? And this, this is just a base. Again, I would create several of these. I would, if I was doing this, I'd probably create 10 or 12 different feathers. Some of them are wider, some of them are skinnier, whatever it might be, so forth and so on. Some might need to be shorter because if you look at something like a bird or anything, like that, all the feathers aren't the same size. Like the feathers on the wings are way bigger than the feathers that are on the chest of a bird. Okay, so you got to think about all that stuff as well. I'm just going to give you a technique and now you go and expand upon this technique, okay? So now that I have this, this is a, a mesh that I have. Okay, and let's say, let's even grab a bird. Let's go to, let's see, I think they might be in projects. We've got some birds here in Zizu. There's a finch. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I don't want to lose this feather. So, and I don't want to lose what I've been working on. So I'm going to load from project up here. Okay. And what that does is it's going to allow me to load one of the Z zoos from the actual folder. Okay. So here, let me, it's on my other screen. Okay. So I'm in the ZBrush 2021 right now. Right. <clears throat> and uh, there's projects. So Z projects right here. I double click that and then Zizu has some Z sphere things that Shane Olson did. And there's a ton of birds in here. Okay, so we'll, we'll just grab the finch, I guess, right here and open that. And what that did is actually open the finch in the current project that I have. Okay, and then this is all Z sphere driven. Okay, so these are, he's using he's using classic skinning so if I turn off the classic skinning and I hit preview we just get this right right and, and if I don't want it as a dynamesh I can turn off dynamesh and then I would get this and what it is is geometrical shapes right that's kind of what's happening here right so I'm gonna say go ahead we can dynamesh it okay real quick and then now let's say I want feathers in here through here, here, and here. Okay, I want the feather I just made, I want to go along this part of the finch, right through here. Okay. So now that this is masked off, okay, we come over here to fiber mesh. In fact, you should be work we should be working on the skin version. Okay. Now we want to come to fiber mesh and hit preview. Oh boy. Right? So you got just boom, it's a furry furry bird right now okay so i'm gonna say we don't need as many so i'm gonna knock it down let's see with 20 no let's go way lower than that let's just start at one oh, okay he's losing his feather hair that's actually pretty good because then what i'm going to do now i'm going to up my coverage right so it starts getting wider um let's give a little bit more gravity maybe to it maybe less twist maybe not so much twist maybe a twist of two okay that's better okay and I'm gonna say what if I want less okay yeah even let's go even let's go even a little bit less uh, okay that's good and then now I'm going to also play with this profile right so I'm gonna make them even wider a little bit more wider okay and I need a little bit, I need some more segments. So you see they're, they're kind of the way they are. I need them to fall a little bit differently. So I'm gonna add more polygons to each one. So we get something like this happening, right? And now let's go ahead and maybe, not so much gravity. Okay, so this, anytime you touch a slider in this, it re-updates, right? So the way you're viewing it matters, okay? Because that's how things react. So see, that's why I was going from above. So the gravity kind of doing a little bit more, a little bit different, right? So you can go above or I can snap it to maybe a three quarter and then that'll change how the feathers are falling, see? Okay, so let's just say this is enough, okay? We've got enough, all right? I'm gonna accept this. Okay, and what that's done is made a new subtool. So obviously this is a person asking about the feathers, right? So this is using 
fiber mesh. And I can even turn the fiber mesh themselves into feathers. Okay. I don't, I don't, I have to see if I have, I might have an image still where I had a feather and you can render these out and then look like feathers. Okay. So here's the one technique that you guys could use, right? I have all these feathers now here. Okay. What I can tell ZBrush to do now is I'm going to tell ZBrush in modified topology, I want to use a micro mesh, right? So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to grab my feather that I made. Okay. And now it's telling you, Hey, 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 look up here. This is literally a Lisa needs braces happening to you inside of ZBrush right now. Lisa needs braces. Lisa needs braces. Lisa needs braces. Lisa needs braces. John, have a good night. Okay. So I'm going to say, okay, turn on micro mesh in render palette. Okay. So in here, right in the render properties okay you need to draw micro mesh okay and when i do that you'll see that the feathers kind of get these white things looking at them what's happening is watch this watch when we we go to render what's happening is the feather is being applied okay so let's also we don't want i'm going to Change my BPR settings here. I don't want it to have any sides. Okay, so what's happening here, this feather is actually being applied. Okay, across this. So what I need to do now is find the right angle for this feather. So this direction's not working. So I'm gonna try I'm gonna try this direction. Go back to my feathers. And turn off micro mesh, turn it back on, now grab it the feather and render that one out. Let's see what we got. Okay. So this is applying the feather to every one of the fibers is what's happening here. Okay. So you can see that mesh that's coming off there is actually the feathers. It's not, it's not the, it's not this anymore. This is being replaced. Right, so I'm probably gonna go, I'm gonna make this, let's see how big this is. Let's make this bigger. Okay, so this, it's really big, so. But let's make it wider, a lot wider, something like that. And now let's go back to this. And now let's try that one. There, that's, that's looking better. And then now render that out and see. So you can see what's happening here. The mesh, let's turn off the color because the color is just probably distracting, right? We, we're getting here now is what's being stretched along the fibers is the feather that I made. And you can see the size of it's going to matter. So let's go ahead and also make it a little bit longer. So once you find the right size, then you're that's it. Then that's all I needed to do, right? And if you turn on polyframe, you'll see the feather. Okay, and then if I shift R, see that's what I'm getting now. I'm getting this feather that's being along. And, and if you guys aren't re remembering how to do any of this, there's already a project that exists inside of ZBrush that you guys can pull up that is doing it. Um, actually, let's see, it might be in tools. Mm -hmm. There's the leaf. Uh, we've moved things around so many times over the years that I don't. There it is. It's right there. So you see that miscellaneous right there. That's actually doing the same thing that I'm doing right here right now with this bird. So let's go ahead and load from project again. And let's see, what was it? Demo project. No, it was in miscellaneous. And this one, this, so you see, it's just fiber mesh. And you see the green, that's the leaf, this mesh. And then when you go and render, Zebra swaps out the planes, right? And gives you the leaf instead, right? So this would be a way to do this, of course, okay? So that is something for you as well. You could also just turn this thing, right? If you have it low polygon enough, you could turn this into some kind of repeating feather as well, if you wanted to. 
You have to get smart about it, though. You wouldn't have this in there. Um, what I mean by that, you would have, uh, like, this would be its own polygroup, right? And then the middle, in essence, would become its own polygroup. And then you would have three polygroups. And you can put it along a curve if you wanted to, right? Uh, here, let's, let's, let's do a really, really, really fast here, okay? So let's, let's just keep this okay and take this center it make that let's make a cube perfect so do something like this and now we need that cube to be flat like that flat this way okay and then i'm going to make this be a little bit taller Okay, and now I'm going to add some spans through here. So let's do, let's insert an edge there. Let's insert an edge there. And now let's do multiple edge loops. Just give a little more topology through there. And now what I'm going to do is make that one polygroup. And then let me give the tip. Make that one polygroup. And then now let's put this to look something like that and okay I want all of this to be one polygroup all of that okay so you got something like this right so there's three polygroups one two three okay and then now brush I'm going to turn this into an insert mesh brush and then now we've got an insert mesh brush okay and then what I'm going to do now is turn on stroke curve mode and what that does now is it repeats the blue part, right? So you can see I'm making something like this now, right? And then now I've got start and end. So the next thing that I want to do, I probably don't need as many spans as I did, but in the brush palette, in the modifiers, I'm going to tell it to weld my points. This is a feather, so it needs some resolution and probably even more bend angle. So now you can start doing stuff like this, right? And then it's all based upon how much you draw out is what you're going to get. Right. And then of course, if I smooth this, you start getting this. Now, what I also want to do is play with the, the mesh along the curve. Right. So when I'm drawing this out, I want things to happen through here. So this is again in the curve menu because I want to affect something with the curve. I'm going to open up modifiers. And I'm going to turn on this size option and then it's going to use this. And so if we update, you'll see it starts to taper. So I want to actually play with this tapering now. So I probably want to bulge a little bit there and come down like this. And I want to add, so if we come straight across, so you see what I'm starting to get. So we want to play with this ability to add more taper in the middle, right? So see, it starts to give more of that feather look going on in there right really start playing with that taper and now i'm going to add another dot and keep this and keep it so it's only really restricting it to certain parts of the curve so you find the right one and then now anytime i draw out you see this is what we're going to get so this is me just turning a brush and then doing stuff like that right and then you would make things like this so you tack on top of what i just did with the fire mesh and then you make a brush like this so you can by hand put things where you want them okay does that make sense let me see and then one last thing let me see i gotta see if i have it i don't know if i have it anymore hold on um oh i don't have it even on this computer so forget it forget it We'd have to find here. Maybe, maybe I can hold on. Give me one quick. Hold on. Uh, hold on. I'm just grabbing something really quick. Hold on. I want to see if I can find something for you guys that would make sense that also would work for us. For what I want to show, um, this one will probably work. We can, we can try this one. Hold on. I'm gonna throw this in my demos. Okay. Okay. So, we were talking about quickly about the fiber mesh stuff. 
God, I am on. I'm. I'm. We're in like exception, tangent, ville, like no one's business right now. We're. We've. We, we're. We're off in tangents right now. Okay. So, <clears throat> one thing that you guys could do, with the fiber mesh, for feather parts, just so you're aware of this. Also, again, I'm gonna make way less of them. I'm gonna make the coverage a lot bigger. I'm gonna actually turn off the twist. Let's add more segments so I can get more and we need more length for sure. Like that would have been better to do. Okay, so now let's go with less. What I can do is apply a texture. Okay, so I'm going to import a texture. Let's see, downloads. And I'm going to say no. And then there's a texture, right? And that texture is in essence a feather. Okay. And so what I'm going to tell ZBrush is make it transparent. Right. So you can see now these are just feathers. That's being driven by an image. So this is what they do in the gaming world, right? Like a hair card. That's pretty much what this is. Right. And then now you just, you just say, how many do you want? Right. And then you would do things like, have variation in length, have variation in coverage. So it's a little bit more realistic, right? Play with this profile even more. So the feathers can be a lot wider. And then that way you won't need as many, right? I don't need to bump this up a lot and it's gonna start giving me a lot of feather, maybe less gravity. Right, and there you go. There's an easy way. This is, this is super easy, okay? And then you can render out and you can see what you're doing. And I wouldn't render with polyframe on. There you go. Okay, just, and the shadows are really dark right now in my render, and they're very, we don't need micro mesh anymore. And my shadows are just very dark. Okay, all right, back to, can you show how to make a pearl? necklace with gaps in between with the steps option and the curve yeah a pearl necklace is easy i'm assuming you want to you want a string in there too i'm assuming you want some kind of string happening in there as well is what i'd be guessing you just don't want to do boop, boop, boop. you want to have some kind of rope or something like that in there uh, yeah that's an easy one in fact if i wanted that rope here you go here's an easy thing let's just go into the brush palette here of this and these brushes there's some more brushes in here here's a rope one right here Okay, so I'm going to load that brush and what this is, see, we'll turn off the fibers. This is a rope, right? So we'll go bigger. So you guys can see, so I want maybe that in the pearl necklace, right? Yeah, right, right, right on cue, Alex. Lisa's necklace, Lisa's necklace. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rip this off the brush. I'm going to take it. I'm going to say two mesh, right? Because this has already been figured out. In essence to be repeating right so what i mean by that it lines up so if i was to duplicate this right you see it just it all lines up perfectly so now all i'm going to do is say all right we've got this let's go ahead and let's append something new i don't really care what it is because i am going to change it to this sphere and now i'm going to rotate this sphere like this Oops. 90 degrees i'm going to size it down something like this okay w key okay this is sitting at three so let's put this one at three as well okay i want something like that okay looks good i don't necessarily need as many spans here right so this is the thing this is important people because if we're making a necklace right we really don't need a lot of spans for a rounded shape Okay, so it's not really necessary to have a ton here. Because remember, we're going to be making this along a brush, so it's going to duplicate multiple times around the brush, right? <clears throat> so this is important to us to do this, okay? Um, and then this, this is so now we've got this and we've got this. So what I'm going to do is let's turn the sim not color, let's turn symmetry on. Let's go to Z Modeler. 
Okay, and once again, I am making this the wrong way. So let's go ahead and rotate everything. I want that. Okay, let's go like that. For now, just for me working in symmetry. I need to also rotate it this way. So I can be have X symmetry. There you go, that's what I want. And let's insert an edge loop here. Let's end edge loop here. Okay. Let's take these faces. This is gonna be a new poly group. Let's shrink it and make that a new poly group. Let's turn on dynamic. And now let's turn this off. And let's take these faces, Q mesh poly group all, and push this in and maybe give something more like that. So when we go to make this, it'll look like, see, a bead or something going through there, right? Just giving that extra little push uh, will do it we'll do good. So I'm going to actually also slide this in a lot tighter. I'm going to slide that. I'm going to slide this in so it just makes it look like it's a little bit more tight in there. Okay, so there we go. There's our piece right so what i'm going to do is merge these together so this will be and i can even do this this is one poly group right and then this i'm going to make its own poly group so now there's this and then there's this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to merge these together okay so now i've got this okay so now this is what i want repeating along my necklace okay so now all i have to do is pick this up so brush create an insert mesh brush. I'm going to say new. And then of course I want this to not draw out like that. I want it to draw along a curve. So I'm going to turn curve mode on. And when I'm drawing out, we get that, right? So then this is my necklace that I start to get. Now what I need to do is fix this up a little bit in there. So I'm going to say brush. I need to weld the point and I'm going to add a little bit of resolution to the curve. So now we've got what you're looking for, something like that. And then there's your, there's your necklace. Okay. And then that would be just infinitely be able to draw out the pearl necklace. Okay. And then now applying it to a model, just reading through. Okay, so now I can grab, let's, uh, let's see, we can, I guess we can grab the demo head. Let's just grab the demo head. Okay, and now I would want one of these going around. So now I would duplicate this because I'm going to use one of the heads actually for drawing the curve out. So now I can start drawing this curve out. Right, and it's gonna follow him. Right, so what I could also do is tell it to wrap around. So as I'm drawing this out, if you hold the shift key and then let go, see it starts wrapping around here. And right now I have symmetry on, so I don't want symmetry on. Let's turn symmetry off. Okay, there, symmetry is off. So I want this, right? Let's just look at this. I want it wrapping around the head, right? So you see, you can have the curve drawn out like this to make what you're trying to make. Uh, let me see, uh, I'm on the wrong one. Right, so drawing the curve out, you can just tell ZBrush to either do this, where it just wraps around, and then now it's gonna wrap around, okay? And then now I've got that necklace going around his neck. Or, or if you want to control this a little bit differently, right? You could also do the stuff that we've already talked about. I could grab something like slice curve and then kind of slice across and maybe, you know, do a little bit something like that. Right? And this is going to slice across the mesh, right? So now you got a poly group. And now, of course, you come back to this function and say frame by polygroup, right? That curve's now matching, falling along that, and now you touch, and then now that's just gonna go around it. 
and then there, there that's that's a pearl necklace. Uh, so your other comments, what do you want to see as a step? Because when I use the curve, it goes into the base mesh. So what's controlling that, there's a controller for that. Where this sits on the surface can be controlled. So when you were drawing stuff out like this, it's going to sit right on, by default, it should sit right on top of the surface. But I can change that in the brush palette. And right here, there's an embed option. Okay, so then all I got to do is if I turn this down and then now I touch the curve, you can see now the necklaces are sitting. And for something that <laughs> we're supposed to be doing today is making something 3D print ready, this would be smarter. That way, a part of every pearl and a part of all part of the rope is inside the surface. Because obviously I want to 3D print this out and I want to make sure there's no gaps. I don't want any gaps in here, right? I want it actually all intersecting. There can't be any gaps. So this is where I would use something like, like this. And if I go all the way up, it's going to float above the surface. See? So to your other question, that should answer it, I would hope, for you. Yes? Maybe so? All right. Let's get back to my queen, my, uh, my girl here. All right. So we looked at doing some crowns with array mesh and now i want to look at doing stuff even with with this right so let's go and select her so we have her selected and i'm going to now insert let's go ahead and insert let's insert a plane at this point I, it doesn't matter to me because i'm going to swap out the plane with this and now let's size this down. We're gonna move it up. Uh, let's move it here, here. Okay, here. Let's say something right around there. Okay, right about there is good. And I'm gonna rotate this. Okay, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn on dynamic, subdiv. I'm gonna turn off my smoothing. Okay, and I'm going to throw some thickness on this now. So let's go here. Somewhere around there is good. And go back to our Z modeler. Okay, I'll turn on my symmetry. Extrude. Okay, I'm going to snap to the surface. So I'm going to do one inch at a time right now. Then that's set. Let's do point, move, snap to surface. Let's do face, do nothing. Okay. Okay, in Brahm, your problem is your mesh itself is the problem then. It's too big. Okay, because the sizing of the mesh plays a role on how it gets repeated along the curve. So if you're changing your step your your curve stepping, what happens is the curve gets larger red black red black red black, right? So in essence the curve resolution itself drops. So your mesh itself is important. It's best to even not even really, it'd be better for the one that I even made wherever it is now and this, all these things I've been clicking on. There you go. This, it's better to actually, this part to not stick out so much. It'd be better for this part to be more like right there. Okay, because this will make a difference then. All right. Because then it's it's smaller. It's here. Watch if I let's go back to here. This is the one we made. Now let's grab this one. Brush from mesh. Okay, so now you can see that one. Even the icons very different, right? This one now is going to be. See, you get the spheres are already bigger. Watch same brush size. See the difference? So the length of the mesh itself and the size of it plays a role on all of this, right? So it would be better what I was doing to go this route than this route. And that's because that's most likely what you are running into. Okay, the bounding box of this, it's best if you can to keep it fit within a perfect square, if you can. If you start making a rectangular, then that's getting put along the curve, right? So if I start playing with my stepping, right? And I'm assuming you're playing with your stepping because you want a bigger gap, you want something like this, you're turning it up. And see when I turn it up, 
I'm making more rope. But see, that curve also, it's very big, right? That red, black, red, black, red, black part. So if I change that in here, right? And I say with this one, change also the stepping, right? Now I'm gonna get this, right? So you see there's there's a little, they're bigger and there's more there. Your problem you have now is if you're trying to do that, you're getting this happening in between here, right? So this is why things like, but this is gonna stretch the pearl um, in modifiers. This is really what stretch is used for. People use this for other things and it's not what it's meant for. It's meant for, stretch is meant for this. So you can now stretch across the gap and see so and get something like that. So this is a different type of necklace now. It's taking that that pearl and stretching it as well. Right, you lower your steps, it'll make the step closer. Okay. And if you didn't add a rope to it, it's just a pearl. If it's just a pearl, then then it's just a sphere. Then you're stepping is going to play a role in that, but make sure your sphere was squared and wasn't massive or anything like that, okay? All right, back to her. Okay, so now that we have this brush the modeler, okay, I'm going to now start extruding and making some kind of different crown for her. So I'm just going to go here. Let's bring something down and then like that. Uh, let's keep doing this. This time I'm going to bring both points and we'll start changing the shape of this a little bit more and do something that maybe comes around her ear and let's do like a, uh, comes to like almost a point down here. So just move these, oops, I just move these around a little bit. So it kind of wraps around her a little bit and then let's Okay, I don't want, I just want one edge and then maybe it starts doing this. So because I've set up um, my brush to work now as kind of like a topology builder, I can move points and extrude and I'm not worried about, I'm still attaching to the surface, right? And then now it's coming around there and let's make another one here. Let's start getting so it kind of is going to dig into her hair a little bit. Because remember, she's bald right now, right? So let's make something like let's Let's get a little more, maybe a little bit more interesting in the back. Um, so a little bit more. Mm, I don't know, maybe. Okay, let's do this. Let's turn on. Now let's turn some smoothing on and let's see what we start to get. Okay. I'm gonna throw some creasing on the outer point. So this is what we start to get now. Okay, so this is now, I know it's following her surface. We're good to go. It's following her head where I want it to follow, right? Okay. Uh, Abraham, you, if you email me, then maybe I can help you, okay? It's all going to come down. I need to see what it is that you're making to really help you out through that process. Okay, so now I'm building this surface along here. It's post subdiv, maybe. And then smoothing it. There we go. And then now let's knock the creasing down. Okay, I'm I like that better. That's that's better looking yes yes okay so this is in essence now kind of like the base of the crown that i want right <clears throat> so i'm gonna say okay that's good i'm gonna accept this now so i am now got three subdivisions being added to this so i can see this right what this would look like and i'm gonna say apply and now what we got are four subdivision levels so i can go back down to the low and walk back up to the high. So I'm going to, I'm going to adjust this a little bit. Let's start playing with these points in here. I'm going to let's slide just the edge, in, edge in. I want it to be a little bit sharper there. I want to come to a, a sharper point there. And maybe, just maybe, 
let's add a crease to just let's see this edge and this edge and let's see you know getting and then now also let's do it to this edge and now get a little bit of a little bit of creasing there 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 Adding some more crease elements in there. Let's give it to a sharper point. Okay, something like that looks good. Let's do the same for the back here. Let's walk down to the low. Let's slide this in. Let's just make this be a cooler, a little bit cooler crown. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, I want that sharp point in there. Okay, that looks good. Um, let's play with this a little bit. All right there goes that what I showed you guys earlier. Yeah, make that be even. Give it a little some other design element in here, and let's do the same thing here. Let's bring this up. Go back up my subdivision level so I can see what I'm doing. Let's make it a little bit. Just taper it a little bit more. And then let's taper this. Let's give this be a little bit more of a peak going on here. Quickly just, yeah, there we go. Okay, so now I got this going around here, right? So it's kind of, because she's gonna put it on like that and then this will stick in her hair. All right, so let's give this uh, some more volume to it. So there's multiple ways we can go about doing this. Just giving it a nice little ridge, right? We can use a little polygon. We can use everything that I've already shown you guys with going around. So let's, yeah, I like that. So let's do it. Let's let's turn this now on and back into our dynamics. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm in dynamic subdiv. We're gonna put this at four. All right, and let's go ahead and let's pull this part now off her head a little bit more. Pull some of this off, off her, and I'm gonna pull this way off. I wanna put it coming off her face a little bit more. Okay, and let's, let's have this start curl a little bit out. A little something like this. So as this going on right in it. I want that profile, just a little bit of bend in there. All right, and then let's go ahead and brush extruder. Let's do a nice extruder, okay. I really like one of these first two. Let's see what these look like. Uh, let's frame it. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna show just the red portion. All right, and I'm going to say stroke and let's frame the border. So now I got two curves. In essence, I got a curve going around the whole border. And then we click and we get this. Okay, that's that's too much. Right? Let's a lot smaller. Something more in that realm. I'm actually gonna turn off dynamic. And do something around. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe this one. That one's not bad. I like that one. That one works for me. Okay, so we're done with that. Clear a mask. So now I've got a nice little ridge going around the whole thing, right? And then the key part here is we are still, right? We are still working with something that is um, low, 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 lower polygon, right? So that's also a key point in here, right? So something like that, there we go. Okay, now let's continue this process and using these brushes maybe, or you know, maybe uh, having a little more fun with these. Okay, so I'm going to brush, extrude, profile, and then now go maybe a little bit bigger and doing some stuff like this. now. This brush by default, right, is following the curvature of what we're doing, right? So it's following 
whatever it's coming in contact, see? So I'm gonna take advantage of this, actually. I want to use that to my benefit, okay? So what I actually wanna draw on is something else. I'm gonna draw on something else and I'm gonna make a shape, okay? So I'm going to, uh, let's go ahead and let's just duplicate the crown that we're making. And then now I'm gonna center, center this in the center of the crown and let's replace this with a sphere. And now it's just way too big. Right, and I'm gonna go elongated. It needs to be rotated, and now let's stretch it out. Something more like that realm, I would say. Uh, let's see, how far back do I wanna bring this part of her? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, and we don't need, so let me flatten. Let me flatten uh, this part down here. We don't need this part, any of that. Now she's becoming Egyptian. <laughs> uh, and I'm gonna slice it too, so there, okay. So this shape is now gonna be kind of my driver, okay, for what I want these curves to look at, okay. So when I'm drawing these out, right, I want them to look at not this, I want them to look at this thing, right? And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to just shrink this down quite a bit, okay? And I'm gonna turn her body off. So when I'm drawing these out, so you're getting this starting to happen, right? Okay? And what I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and shrink it even more because I don't want the body to be seen, okay? And what I'm gonna do is tell ZBrush now when you're drawing out, look at different parts of this. So now let's turn on symmetry and draw these out, okay? And now it's looking at the crown, right? But what I'm doing when I do this, see right now what's set right now in our picker is continuous. Okay, so I can try, well, what if we did farthest? Right, that's kind of more maybe what I'd be looking for. Something more like that, right? And then now I can position this. Let's say I want that to go there. Okay, that one looks good. And that's a nice big crown there. Let's do a small one that does this. Okay, and it found the furthest point to connect to. So let me play with that and make it shape and find this. And let's put a curve now on this one. Right, so I'm using something else, right, to give me the driver for this. Um, let's go smaller. And let's go maybe something like this that comes up the middle. Something like this, right? I'm going to just even turn the crown off. So I can just do something like that. And then now maybe let's have one that comes in like this and connects into it like that. Right? And then now maybe do the same thing in here. Maybe we'll come off and connects in like that. Uh, and let's move this so it's sitting more like that in there, right? So this is another way about going, doing my crown. So really, I want those with this to be making my crown, right? So this is just an, another approach for me to be able to make something. And I kind of, I kind of, I'm kind of liking what we're making here, right? So I'm gonna mask these off. Let's move these. Let's move these into place. Let's move them down more so they sit lower. Right, and then I gotta split. I just split this off. And if I do a little splitteroo, and then now there's my crown. Right. So this just gives another way 
of going about, and this is kind of how maybe this would be better for you to look at it, right? And then now you see it, it didn't see your head. It was looking at the actual little eggy shape that I made. So you see it's kind of not sitting on her head anymore. Right, but then this could be something else. You know, you want maybe the opposite. So let's go, let's undo, let's delete this one. And what I mean by the opposite, you want actually this to sit more like this. And like, you want the crown to come off her head. So it doesn't even touch her hair in essence. Like it's sitting more on the top of her head more than anything. Like a little bit more of an angle like that. Okay, so now when I'm doing this, you start going, okay, I want that. Okay, let's make sure I don't have any marker. Okay, and now let's put the picker on continuous. So it continuously looks at the surface. And I can reposition those. Let's go a little bit bigger. Yeah, something like that. And then let's make another one that comes big like this. Yeah, like that. And then let's make one more big one that goes to the back like that. Okay, now let's change our draw size and let's start making smaller ones. Now maybe now come like this. And we do not have solo on, so let's just keep looking at this. Okay, something like that. come out just reposition that and oops all right and what I'm going to do now is lock down oops, I'm gonna lock the start and the end so that I can reposition this how where I want it to go more like that there and then now maybe See if I do this and then maybe reposition that. It's there. It's my world. Happy little trees. Happy little trees. It's kind of making these almost like like almost like twigs or like a tree branch look to them. Uh, but then obviously I'm gonna make it look like it's metal in the render. Just having some fun with this and manipulating these. Uh, yeah, there. I'm going to turn off the snapping ability so I can move that shape in a little bit more. Okay, there's that one. Let's draw one that comes in like this now. Okay, I want to put that snapping ability back on. And that way I can, let's get this one to be a little, this one needs to be bigger. Just rotating it. Okay, and if I want, I, I'm more comfortable drawing like that. You guys can change this, right? I can flip it vertically. And if I want to draw this shape more like, like that, See, that makes a difference for me. And then there you go, right? And then now this, with our crown, right? These pieces are sitting there now. Okay, and if we get rid again, get rid of the piece that we're using as our driver, this is what we have. And now I would update these to work, right? And then now I got a crown like this. And now I would just switch to a move brush and continue doing any kind of editing that I want. So it looks like they're part of the crown. Like they're sitting in the crown a little bit better. And I want this one to come more in like that. And if I don't want any of that to be popping out, then you just keep popping it through. And again, I'm making something that's going to be printed, right? So you're gonna have a head in the way, right? down at the base. In fact, that's gonna make it better for the print itself. 
Okay, so this would be another great way to go about this. All right, so this is just combining now low polygonal Z modeler, and then now I'm using the curves to kind of manipulate and just play with a crown idea, right? So that's kind of also where we were going with some of these down here, like trying to do some kind of twig look to them. This one's more, I was going, this one's more like organic feel to it, right? And then in this one, you guys can also, don't forget, you can also use something like snake hook, right? So I can like snake hook through, throw Sculptures Pro on, and you guys could just, just do whatever you want now. Right, if I wanted to make this crown, like I said, look a little bit more like it's an organic, like tree kind of a thing, this would be the way I could go about it. Maybe now start putting little stubs coming off in certain areas. Right, so it kind of feels more like twig, um, organic, like more of a thorny piece. Right, you just go from different angles and get something like that, right? And then the difference is Snake Hook 2 and Snake Hook 1. Snake Hook 2 is looking at the faces that I'm drawing on and going in that direction when I pull on it. Snake Hook 1 is not doing that. Snake Hook 1 is using 100% the camera. Right, so this is just an example. The thing though, I probably won't go this route because I'm making a print that's a miniature and this is gonna to be too, getting and get too tiny. There needs to be a minimum uh, thickness, right? And then these are not gonna give me that minimum thickness that I need. Oh, it would even be fun. Let's, all right, let's do, uh, where are you? Bru Here's a brush that I like to use when I'm doing, um, and I actually made a bunch of variations when, when we were doing Sculptures Pro. Yeah, the spiral is a lot of fun. Go really big. And like spiral some stuff. Right, just gives it. Different spiraling happening there. Like let the brush do some work. Let's go bigger. Yeah, see, stuff like this. It gives an extra little pop to our crown. But this, the problem with this, again, our ultimate goal is to 3D print this for a miniature size. So I'm not gonna go with this design. I'm not, like, it would be smarter to go with a more crown like this that's very big because you know we're talking about millimeter size right so this is going to be even more tiny so it'd be better to go with some kind of crown more like this one so i, I think i'm going to do a combination of this one with all other stuff i was showing you guys i'm going to do a combination of all of them together okay so you're asking about let me go back to this. So you're asking about when you're using the spiral. Well, let me go bigger. When you're using the spiral, it goes one direction and Alt will go another direction. Yeah. So you can do that and then Alt key will switch the spiral. But what you guys can do is what this brush is using, it's using this twist stuff. So you can make your twist straight, go the opposite direction and see now you're getting spirals in different directions right and then this you guys think about this crown it might be cool watch this we're gonna do this watch the watch this little trick let's see uh, let's do yeah let's do that okay so watch this I'm gonna do okay that looks good and then I'm gonna do this okay do it again do it again do it again do it again do it again, again. So I am repeating this over and over again, and I'm actually using my draw size 
to say where I'm going to make the, the gap and I can move the model as well if I want. So I can continue this tw exact same twist down the whole crown because obviously this crown, right, is following something very particular, right? So I'm just telling ZBrush when I do this twist here, I want to do it again somewhere else on the crown, right? So there's two ways to do this. If you don't move the camera, okay, if you do a twist like this, if you don't move the camera, move your cursor, hold down the shift key and then press one. Wherever the cursor is, it's gonna do that twist again. But see, it's also looking at the camera so you can see what's happening there, okay? So what I wanna be able to do is kind of move the mesh like this as I'm doing this, right? So I'm gonna use a different technique. So I'm gonna do that. And then now I can move the camera a little bit, move my model and do this, and then now do that, right? And then now put another one there, you know what? And we'll put another one down here, down here. That's different, okay? That's a different technique. The first one was using this, replay last relative. So you can see the shift one. So that's if you're not gonna move the model, right? That's replaying the last stroke you just did somewhere else, okay? I wish it came with a unique sound bite. Okay? So what I'm doing now is something else. I'm doing this now. I'm doing a recording. So what I did is I turned this on and now it's recording my strokes. So for example, if I wanted to do spiral like that, and then another one, and then another one, right? Those are three spirals now. You see it says three strokes, they're being recorded, right? So now if I stop the recording, I can say replay all again, and that'll just play all three in the same spot, right? And then there's a replay all relative, which is shift do. Okay, so if I did this, move somewhere else, and I do shift two, it's gonna do all three spirals again for me. And go, okay, now let's put one here in the middle. So shift two, right? And then if I would turn symmetry back on, right? Shift two, does it again, right? This, look at, this is a cool design actually starting to happen here. Happy, happy. We are Bob Rossing it now, people. We are Bob Rossing. Just letting ZBrush do the work for me. That's a cool pattern that's starting to happen. Happy mistakes, man. They work. Right, and then I go somewhere else, do it again. Yes. 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 Right, some kind of crazy pattern happened here. Yeah, look at that. Look at that, that's pretty cool. We are making art is right. Okay. Um, so let me look. What questions did I miss uh, for you guys? Uh, well, thank you, TK. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. If you press Alt, we answered that. What's a good way to drag out a... Uh, wait, what's a... Wait, what's a good way using the snake hook to branch out only without dragging deforming origin points? Uh, wintry snowman. Your question is what's a good way using the snake hook to branch out only without dragging deforming origin points? Uh, you can't. You well that's the point that it's seeing to draw to sculpt with, and that's that point's gotta move. So can you elaborate a little bit more on your question? What is, like, I guess more, what are you trying to make? And maybe snake hook's not the right tool for it. If you want to add on top of that snowman, wintry snowman, right? That was your name. I just scroll down. Uh, oh, now we have already covered it, but are you using new mesh project brush? How did you able to Boolean it's the same way as always been? Okay, the question, are not sure if you already covered it, but after using the new mesh project brush, how do you are you able to Boolean? Is it the same way as always been? Yeah, well, 
I covered all that in the last stream. So if you go to the stream before this one, I cover all that in the last stream. And it's if you're using live booleans, then you open up more stuff with these brushes, right? So I can do a mesh project and do something like this, let go, right? That's going to be part of the crown. If I, let's turn off sculptures, we don't need it. If I do this and then hold the shift key, it makes it a new sub tool. And then now all day, I can move around, do this, even do something like this, hold the alt key, right? And then that gets used as subtractive because that's automatically turned into a new sub tool that's subtracted. And because we have live booleans on, you're good to go. But it, now that I have that subtractive, I can continue again to come in here and say, now what I wanna do is something that does this and then just let go and all it's doing is adding to the existing subtractive, but now I see I've added that to look more, maybe what I want, maybe something more like that. Right, and then this is just adding to the existing subtool. That's all this is. I'm not holding Alt or not holding Shift, okay? And applying the Booleans, there's more than one way to do it. By applying the Booleans, I always use a foldering system but down here, you got either your Booleans right here. You click this button and it makes a new tool with your Boolean result. There's three ways actually to apply Booleans. Uh, if I was doing what you're asking, Wintry Snowman, I would see, I wouldn't use Snake Cook probably. You could, you 100% can and the size is done by pressure sensitivity so if you're lighting up the bro the the tree will get bigger and if you're going smaller it'll get you know it'll get smaller right so your your draw size plays a role in all of this right so when you're looking at this if you're going to use snake hook okay so i'm going to use snake hook two so it's along the normal boom okay so when you're doing this if you're pressing stronger Right, you're gonna get a different results. So we need Sculptures Pro for this. So if I press stronger, it's gonna keep getting skinny and skinny. If I press lighter, see it takes longer for it to get skinny. Right? So this and it's it's you gotta use if you're gonna you gotta change it and tell it then. If you don't want it to use pressure sensitivity, you gotta tell it to use off. So if you're trying to make something like the size of like your brush size, that's something different. Okay. And you might also, what you also could be looking for is the snake sphere or cactus. So it does this. So these ones are using the brush size. See? And then there's also snake hook. Whoops. There's also a snake hook. Uh, where are you? Sphere, which is just sphere, a spherical looking thing. See? I don't know. That might be what you're looking for. Something more like that. You see, if I press harder, it gets bigger, right? If I press lighter, it gets skinnier. See, it tapered a little bit. And, and then obviously go too light, it'll just stop. And then smooth it down and then continue on. Is that what you're asking? Is that what you're looking for? But you gotta remember with any of the brushes, there's pressure, right? So see, there's a Z intensity and size pressure involved. Okay. But honestly, I would, for me, this would be an example where I would probably use a Z sphere instead. Like I would probably do something like this because then I can position something where I want it, scale it down. Like I can do after the fact stuff, but now, now I'm in draw. So I just do this and then move to move, draw, move it. Right, and then switch the scale, scale it down, scale that down, and then up, oh, scale that down more, and then make a new branch, new branch, move it off, scale that one down, scale it down more. So this is a way you could also go about just switching between draw mode and move and scale, right? And then doing this, and then when you hit A, you're gonna get a mesh. when you hit the letter A, right? And then now use your snake hook on this. Like use maybe the Z-Spheres to get kind of 
a quick base that you're looking for, like your quick base mesh, and then now switch. So now this is previewing an adaptive skin with Dynamesh on. So I'm gonna turn this into a skin and it makes a new, right? It's gonna come up here and make a new tool, right? And then now with Sculptures Pro, now you got Snake Hook and now you can add more elements quicker. This would probably, I think the way that also you're, you're trying to go to could be a way for you to go, okay? Hopefully that helps you out. Right, and now I'm just turning a lot, making it be more like a branchy look to it. Uh, that's too much, that's too aggressive. Yeah, you can change the size though. Like I, I'm not sure I'm understanding then what you're looking for. When you're using the snake hook, you can't just tell the snake hook in essence to be the size. If you want that, like this is changing the size, right? So you got to tell then ZBrush not to look at this, right? So then here, don't pressure sensitivity, right? Keep it, right, size. But then there's Sculptures Pro, there's a Z intensity involved, like there's all this involved, right? So you're getting all, all these involved. So now I'm just eliminating pressure sensitivity. But the topology can't just keep coming. Like it's, it can't just keep the polygons the same side unless that's why we made what you're more looking for, I think, would be not that one. Is the spherical one, this one. See, it's keeping it based upon the draw size. This is what you're looking for. Which we've got other things turned on making all this happen. I think that's more what you probably can see. This is dependent now on draw size. Okay, and if I don't want pressure sensitivity to be involved in this, then I would need to turn off this. And then that way, when I draw, even when I pick up, see, it's the same size. No matter how hard I press now, or it's always gonna be the same size, okay? This is, I'm assuming this is what you want because this is the only way to do what you, I think you're looking for. And then go to a smaller brush size and now you can do smaller ones. Okay, and then now there's no pressure sensitivity being involved at all. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of it. Uh, is it true you're working on? I don't know where that rumor came from, Doug. No idea. Uh, is it true you're working on a plugin that lets us import curves from Maya Max and Blender? I don't know where you guys. I have no idea. I couldn't even comment on development if I wanted to. All right. So there you go. <laughs> we accomplished. We, this entire stream was a massive tangent. So I gotta, I gotta get going on. I gotta get going on this uh, Banshee. We gotta get past this stuff. My weeks are just been crazy with all the updates, right? So currently we are at 2021.6.2, right? So that's the version you guys all would probably wanna be in. That gives the new features. But keep in mind there is an update. So if you're using 2021.6, go get the point two version, okay? Um, next week we'll continue along um, this journey of making this this va vampire banshee woman uh, I gotta just I gotta bear down next week and just do nothing but sculpting um, so hopefully I can get a lot more further than just having a couple different crowns and give you guys different ideas about a crown okay you're only here for the tangents thanks yes yes comics legend I feel bad for Scott he is patiently waiting for me to finish this thing and get it to him so he can actually do the painting. Yeah. All right, that's it. I got to get going, unfortunately. I got some other meetings coming up. I thank you all for watching. Again, I'll be here next Friday, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time again. We'll be going through her, more of her, uh, and we'll be getting into uh, more things going on with her. I really appreciate you guys taking time out of your day to be with me these last two hours. Top row, Ben. Not even close. 
Okay, so um, I encourage you all, let me know if you have any questions. And in fact, here, let me get my Cintiq out of the way because it's currently in the way. Let me give you guys an email address since I said some of you email me because some of you guys are asking questions that would be easier to see them. Um, there you go, there's my email. So you guys got my email now, there you go. So I don't know if the people here, they were asking me some very distinct questions that we really, I needed to see the model to really answer it better for you. There's my email address so you can reach out to me. So again, hopefully I see you guys next week, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for another taking something and thinking about making it for printing and using it for specifically miniatures so we can get it over to Scott at Miniac. Um, next week, I really gotta limit my tangents and just stick with the model and really get a lot further with her. Uh, so thank you again for tuning in. I'm Paul Gabriel with Pixel Logic, and I'm out. <laughs>